In this example, we'll be using practice exercise 10.3b that can be found in your textbook on page 476. In this example, we are going to calculate our depreciation expense using the units of output method. In the problem, they give us the information that we have acquired a truck that cost $69,000. It has an estimated residual value of 12,000 and an estimated useful life of 300,000 miles. They tell us that it was driven for 77,000 miles during this year. So we first need to determine the depreciable cost, then the depreciation rate, and finally the amount of depreciation expense for this year. Remember that a residual value is how much we are estimating that the asset could be sold for at the end of its useful life. Sometimes we can sell things in part or in total. The useful life is again an estimate of how long we think the asset can be useful to us in our business. When we're talking about depreciable cost, it is telling us how much we are subjecting of that asset's cost to being depreciated. In part A, they are asking for that depreciable cost. Which is calculated by taking the total initial cost of the asset and subtracting away the residual value. So, our total initial cost was $69,000, and we need to subtract away how much we anticipate that we could sell it for at the end of its useful life. And our estimate is that we could sell the asset for $12,000. So, our depreciable cost then, if we subtract the two, would be $57,000. We are subjecting $57,000 of our initial cost price being depreciated. In part B, they asked for the depreciation rate. And we calculate that rate by taking our depreciable cost and dividing it amongst its total useful life. And in this case, it was determined to be in miles. So, our depreciable cost, they told us, we calculated in part A, was $57,000. And we estimate that in total, we can drive the truck for $300 thousand miles. Please keep in mind that the denominator in this case is the total useful life, not the how many miles were driven just this year. So we take the appreciable cost of 57,000 and divide it amongst that total useful life of 300,000 miles. And our depreciation rate then is 19 cents per mile. So every mile that we drive, we are going to calculate 19 cents of depreciation. Remember, depreciation is an estimate. In part C, they want us to calculate what is our total depreciation expense for the year, given that we drove the truck 77,000 miles? In order to calculate our depreciation expense for the period, we take our depreciation rate, which we just calculated at 19 cents per mile, and multiply it by, in this case, actual miles that have been driven. So our depreciation rate 
19 cents and we multiply it by the 77,000 miles that were driven. So for this year, we have total depreciation expense of $14,630. Please note with the units of output method, what stays constant for us for the entire life of the asset is the rate per mile. We will always recognize 19 cents for every mile driven. However, our total depreciation expense per year will vary based upon the number of miles driven. So if next year we only drove 60,000 miles, we would recognize a different amount of total depreciation expense. However, we'd still multiply our 60,000 miles driven by the 19 cent standard rate that we've calculated in Part B. Our journal entry to record depreciation is always a debit to depreciation expense. So for this problem, it would be for $14,630 and a credit to accumulated depreciation for the same $14,630. $630. Remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It's conflicting or bringing down the value of a specific asset. In this problem, it would be bringing down the value of our truck. It's a permanent account because we would see accumulated depreciation on our balance sheet.